YouTubers, what is up? It is Vinny Chill, and here with a special weekend live stream to discuss a few things that I picked up recently. You know, during most of COVID, I've been able to go and grab books for my pull list on New Comic Book Day on Wednesday, but recently had a change in schedule, so now I'm only able to pick it up every few weeks, so I figured... Why not just run down the list and show you guys what I'm reading? Uh, Chris and I tend not to do that. We usually save the books that we're getting to talk about on themed episodes. But I thought, you know, what the hell, I would uh, show you guys what I'm reading. Get your comments, feedback. Let me know if you're enjoying the same uh, books as well, if they're also on your pull list. And also talk about a few books I picked up uh, at a little mini event this morning in Connecticut, courtesy of Coffee and Comics, one of the vendors that were at our show last month for Silver City Con. So I'll start by going through that, and just to drop a few books on you, I was able to get Young Avengers, I'm going to fill in that original run from 2005, so I was able to get Issue 8 and Issue 3. Um, Still missing a few from the whole first run, obviously, there in the, in the corner there. You can see issue number one. Um, have, I think, nine, ten you've seen in other episodes, but also just uh, trying to fill in the gaps here. Uh, but they just were able to get in a gigantic run of Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, I believe they bought a collection off someone who had... Um, somewhere around issue 29 or 30, all the way through the 100s. And then they pulled a few out. I think they were going to get those graded. So some of the key issues like first Gwen Stacy, first Harry Osborn, uh, issue 31, uh, Kingpin, uh, the first Punisher, those were not part of uh, the collection that was for sale today. But I was able to get a few books because I'm trying to fill in at least the key issues uh, through uh, most of the the less than 100 and the 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 400 range. So starting with issue 33. So we got here um, the key issue where Peter Parker realizes that his... Spidey powers include some super strength, so this is uh, very early. This now is officially the earliest issue that I own, issue 33. And then right on the heels of that, we have issue 34. So, you know, as, uh, as Chris and I always talk about, if you can't afford the first appearance of someone, second appearance is the way to go, followed by like a third appearance, depending on the character that also may see some, uh, you know, gain in value down the road. So this certainly uh, should have some value to it. This is second Gwen Stacy, second Harry Osborn. Then we have issue 56. So I just think that's a really cool cover. You got Doc Ock there, Daily Bugle in the background. And this is the first Captain Stacy. So Gwen Stacy's father, who uh, of course was played by uh, Dennis Leary in the, uh, the Andrew Garfield run. And um, so, you know, we haven't seen him, I don't believe, in the MCU yet. I don't recall. Um, but if not, then I would suspect we, we will at some point. Um, I don't know, drop me a comment in there. I forget. He might have already made uh, a brief cameo appearance in the MCU in the first two films. I'm not sure. Then we've got issue 61, and this is first cover of Gwen Stacy. Obviously, huge Gwen Stacy fan. Uh, I've got a bunch of slabs with some variant covers. Obviously, you can see right behind me there, we got first Spider-Gwen, Gwenum. But, um, so first cover... And it's not a great cover. She's actually kind of very small appearing on the cover there, but just wanted to have it for the PC. And then last but not least, to round out the uh, Amazing Spider-Mans I've picked up today, this is 
143, and this is besides the first cyclone, uh, who's you know a very minor character. This is actually the first issue where Peter kisses Mary Jane. So wanted to have that for the collection as well. So I think I did pretty well today uh, based on those. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts out there. What other books uh, are, are you guys interested in for Spider-Man? Um, but now I'm going to jump into my pull list. So again, this is stuff that's built up over the last two weeks. And start with an indie book. This is Not All Robots, number one. And based on, you know, the early spec from what I've heard about this, it's uh, supposed to be really good. Mark Russell's a good writer. Obviously, Diodato is a fantastic artist. He's been doing a lot of indie work lately. So I'm a huge sci-fi nerd. Love AI. Love iRobot. Um, Humans, uh, the show that used to be on uh, TV a few years ago or several years ago now. So anything like AI, cyborg, sort of, you know, robots taking over. Um, this, to me, has a, a little bit of a Terminator or more of like a Matrix feel, like, you know, AI is here. They declare themselves the superior uh, form of civilization on Earth, and so... Not sure if uh, humans are going to end up as prisoners or eradicated, but uh, it's um, it's an interesting read and uh, interested to see where this goes. I think it's a limited series too, so it's it's not going to be very long. Next we have um, Silk, and again this is just a fantastic read, fun read, love it so far. Haven't obviously read this one yet, so I just picked it up, but the first four were really good, and uh, yeah. Um, excited to see where this goes. Then we have Avengers 47, and now this is World War She-Hulk Part 2. So, first issue was pretty good. It was like setting the stage for, for what's going to happen. Um, you know, she was captured, um, and uh, interested to see what happens now uh, for the rest of this. I think it's a five or six issue story arc, so interested to see what's going on there. Uh, this is, uh, the next one is Sinister War, which is number two, and this is the variant cover. Um, all of these covers form like an inner connecting uh, mural at the end. So uh, maybe I can, when I get all the, all the issues, I can throw this up on Instagram or something and show you guys what it looks like. But um, this is the uh, Sinister Six, the Savage Six, and um, it's, uh, it, it, the first issue was, was really good. Um, interested to see where where this goes and how this is going to wrap up. So we'll see. Um, next is Lasher. So these are all um, you know extreme carnage. They're doing one-offs related to each of the symbiotes. So there was Carnage was part one. Um, Scream. I forget what one of the other ones was. Uh, <laughs> I'm blanking on that at the moment, but this is part four of eight, so this is Lasher, and um, yeah, it's from from the earlier ones, I guess, you know, it's like, even if Cletus Cassidy, is, well, you know what, I'm not going to say anymore, just in case you guys want to read it out there, I won't spoil too much, so uh, go out, enjoy it, it's uh, an interesting read, and it's definitely something that's topical now because of the new Venom and Let There Be Carnage movie coming out at the end of September. So we're only about seven weeks away or so from that. Second trailer just dropped recently and, you know, I'm optimistic, I guess. Uh, I, I hope it's at least as good as the first one, but we'll see. Woody Harrelson uh, it's a good actor, and obviously Tom Hardy was really good as Eddie Brock in the first film, so we'll see. But it's cool that they're doing this whole uh, Extreme Carnage run right now. Then we have X-Men. So, you know, the Hickman run, he was writing it, he's still head of X, but that culminated in the planet-size X-Men number one, 
and there was something, it was very aptly named, without going into too many spoilers, uh, but then um, he stepped down as the writer, but obviously it's still continuing that same story with the uh, Krakoa X-Men team, so this is X-Men number two. Then we have The Nice House on the Lake, book three. James Tinian, obviously I'm sure all of you are very well aware of him and his writing capabilities. So this has been fantastic. I love the first two issues of this. And uh, I know this is only a 12-part series, but I would not be surprised if they announced any time now that this was going to be turned into some mini series on you know netflix hbo max or prime video or something it, it definitely seems like it deserves uh to be turned into to something because it seems very sci-fi-ish and unsettling and spooky and i think it would be really something great to watch uh on the small screen or big screen then we have amazing spider-man number 71 so this is, um, you know, the Sinister War. This actually starts uh, the Sinister War. So um, we have part one here. The other issue, the last one I had read before was the prelude to the Sinister War. So this ties in directly to the book I just talked about. This is the culmination of the Nick Spencer run. And rumor has it, maybe it's not so much a rumor anymore, but Kelly Thompson is going to be taking over uh, Spider-Man at the end of the Nick Spencer run. I think it's um, four issues left. It'll end at 75. If that's the case, then I am thrilled because Kelly Thompson obviously is phenomenal. Um, not that she would ever watch this, but I think she's fantastic. Loving the Black Widow run that she's doing. And of course, she used to do Hawkeye. Uh, which and a bunch of other stuff too um so i don't know this run has been good i haven't to be honest i haven't read the whole um the whole lot but from from what i've read in the last few issues and from where i'm seeing this is going to, to end the nick spencer run i'm a big fan of it and we have star wars you guys know obviously i'm a huge star wars fan where are we going here yeah right there um and love me some star wars so high republic very pleased with this i think this was a huge area where they have this uh, instead of just focusing on the skywalker family the skywalker saga now they're going back in time you know hundreds of years to where yoda was really in his prime and jedis are all over uh, instead of being um you know wiped off the you know out of the galaxy so this has been a really good read so far and from what i'm hearing you know we're talking disney plus show movies video games so i think this is really going to be something that disney is going to explore for years to come and i'm also reading the high republic adventures but i'm a few issues behind in that uh, uh, and i think you know that's also a really good run too then we have, speaking of Kelly Thompson, we've got Black Widow number nine. So here we go. And this has been really great. Not surprising with Miss Thompson at the helm, but i um, really happy. Every time I see a new Black Widow come out, always happy to read it immediately. So I'm actually probably going to read that tonight before bed. I've uh, been a huge fan of this. They just introduced, you know, uh, Apogee, uh, the villain in the, the last issue or two, then there's this other character who could perhaps become a protege, um, speaking of White Widow with Yolanda Belova, she's heavily featured so far in this series as well, working side by side with Natasha, so it's interesting to see if maybe they'll do something in the future MCU, um, obviously with Scarlett Johansson sort of bowing out and now involved even in litigation with Disney. Not sure if she would be doing it, but maybe they could take from this story and do something with Yolanda Belova's character. I'm not sure. I also, you know, I think it's been a few weeks now, so spoiler alert, I think it was interesting at the, towards the beginning, I think, of the Black Widow movie, 
they mention something about Natasha and someone says like, oh, you know, I'd expect you to be out on the West Coast now raising a family. And of course, that is a direct tie in to the Kelly Thompson run. There's something that happens in the first few issues here. Uh, so without having this, without spoiling any further, I uh, definitely would pick this up and read it. And then last but not least, we've got the Ninja Turtles Annual 2021. So uh, again, I've been a real big fan of this. I think it's a fun read. Um, they had the whole Lita story where I mentioned it, I think, in a previous episode where it was kind of like Dragon Ball, reminded me of Dragon Ball Z where you had future trunks come back in time to when he was a young kid and warn about a you know a villain like cell you know villain that they had to face and here it was you know adult lita coming back to when she's a kid living with the ninja turtles and telling them that they have to do something the future depends on it and that story arc just wrapped up she presumably like saved the day returned the adult lita returned to the future and so now this is um, the annual issue, sort of like the end of one story arc, and now a new story arc is going to begin. So uh, excited to see where that goes. Well, that's all for this brief live episode, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you're reading, if you're reading any of the same stuff I'm reading, if you think that there's something else out there that I should pick up and add to my pull list, I would love to hear it, so please leave some feedback in the comment section. Also, you know, let me know how you think I fared with the uh, Amazing Spider-Man pickups from this morning, and yeah, I mean... Number 31 is still a grail book for me, as is number 50, but I uh, was very happy with, you know, second appearances, and, and I think the price was right on some of these books today. So Chris and I will be back with another new themed episode very soon, but until next time, as always, stay safe, stay nerdy.